Nitian guys, welcome you back uh, on this video. Today, actually, very excited. I am going to take a comment which uh, some of someone sent on one of the videos, and I'm going to um, share uh, my response or understanding and experience towards uh, what that person is saying. So, without further ado, we're going to start. Uh, like I said, very exciting. So, I welcome you all with my love and respects. And the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. So I'll put the comment uh, here below. I have it here on the paper. So the comment says, Why be attached to being powerful or attached to the thought of surrendering either? You are the universe itself. Attachment to any thought just as an ideology made on planet Earth is bondage as well. Guru appears and disappears as you evolve in many forms. The true surrender is within. All others, no matter how grand, are mere illusions we create for ourselves. Be free. And then heart. <laughs> so, um, yes. So the first thing I wanted to share um, is that in the scriptures, in the Hindu scriptures, actually I'm going to make a video about that uh, in the next few days, so look forward to that. But in the scriptures they say that any form of spiritual practice, any form of meditation on a spiritual truth or anything, cannot give the fruit or be successful if it is not given by Guru. Yesterday in the satsang songs you were sharing, Guru imparts the first, when Guru gives the knowledge, we absorb 25% of this knowledge. The next 25% is experienced when we have a spiritual discussion with disciples who are contemplating on this truth. The third 25% happens when you uh, contemplate within and you kind of dig within and contemplate manana, we call internalizing within yourself. And the last 25% happens when you teach and share it with others. So. It starts with Guru and during the whole process, the connection to the Guru has to be kept alive. So here, we do not understand at sea. We, when Guru talks with the spiritual script, scriptures or even people, spiritual teachers, they will talk about attachment. But the truth is we have no clue what attachment truly is. And we need to make that understanding of being attached as an experience. Um, and that is why the first, the first and foremost thing that needs to be done is surrendering to the Guru. Why? Because unless we face the fear that is sitting deep within us, the fear uh, that is self-generated while we are cherishing delusion about the fear of dying, of non-existence, of, that is experienced in the duality when we see something different than us and we start to experience this conflict, this duality with something outside. So that fear has to be completed, has to be dropped. And the only way to drop that fear is surrendering. Surrendering is the only thing which tackles that fear to the root because there's nothing more scarier than surrendering when you think about it. So if, you're, if, you're, if your context, if you want to free yourself from fear, surrendering is the thing. We are attached to our fear. That is the biggest attachment we have and that is why we keep cherishing it consciously or unconsciously we cherish fear um, so actually we don't understand what attachment is initially when we get introduced to this idea of attachment our mind can start to jump left and right and come to its own conclusion oh why are you attached to this attached to that actually you can be attached to anything when you don't understand truly true attachment as an experience your mind can tell you oh you're attached to this Somebody will tell me I'm attached to Guru. I will tell them I'm attached to the idea of yourself. And you will tell me, oh, you're attached. Like here we say attachment. And I think it's a very good question because I think uh, many of us have this question and this cherish this confusion within us. And uh, bringing clarity and uh, insight about this, I think is very important. Being attached of being powerful, being attached of the idea of surrendering. So you can say that you're attached to anything. You can say to attach to your body, why are you attached to the idea of speaking? Why are you attached to the idea of responding to me? Why are you, you know, <laughs> it doesn't end, it's not real. It's just a kind of a play of the mind, which doesn't lead anywhere. Um, 
Then he says, you're the universe itself. Paramashivoham means I am Paramashiva, I am everything. When you cognize I am the universe, there is no other happening after that. If I'm Paramashiva, then you're Paramashiva, then this is Paramashiva, then that is Paramashiva, then it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cosmic truth, it's a reality, but it is a duality that helps us to free ourselves from the bondages of the manifested existence. In one of the satsangs, Swamiji was saying, the constant of the universe is Paramashiva, and that is what Paramashivoham means. It means you have to remember that the constant of the universe is Paramashiva. And when you remember your constant, you can engage in the other dimensions of life, like length, breadth, depth, time, and so on. You can engage with the dimensions of life, and you won't get deluded because you always engage from the context that you are Paramashiva and that Paramashiva is the constant of the universe. But when you don't understand or fully experience that you are Paramashiva, when you engage in length, breadth, depth, and time, there's every chance you will get lost. So that is why the initiation, the Guru, the surrender, and turning that cognition of Paramashiva into your cognition. Your cognition means, say your cognition is, an understanding, a thought current that you do not question. How, in the, for example, in the normal life, you will totally believe that you are male or female. You will not question that. Um, or you will not question the fact that you're human. There's few things which are cognition. So the understanding of Paramashivam has to become our cognition. And the only way to make it our cognition is to constantly contemplate on it, constantly enrich about it, constantly think about it, constantly implement it. When you constantly engage with that spiritual truth, that spiritual truth becomes you. You associate, you, you, you allow that truth to become you. You associate yourself to that instead of being associated to the idea that I am male, that I am young, that I'm old, that I'm healthy, that I'm sick, that I am this body, that I'm not this body. We are all attached to these things and we truly believe these things, but they're not. It's just an attachment. And that attachment has to be dropped. So the only thing that is worth being attached to is something that is eternal. And the only thing eternal is super consciousness. So that is why Paramashiva means Paramashiva is the embodiment of super consciousness. When you say Paramashiva, you remember I am super consciousness. I am eternal. Then it is not when it is eternal, then you will never lose it. Then it cannot be an attachment. Attachment can only happen if you, the possibility of losing is there. But superconsciousness, because it's eternal, can never be lost. So superconsciousness cannot be an attachment. So that is why contemplating on Paramashivoham constantly is important. And getting initiated by the Guru is important because you need to surrender first. When you surrender, you tackle the fear straight on. When you tackle the fear, which is the kind of the foundation of the mind, when you tackle the foundation, then the whole mind dismantles and all the various confusions that the mind is generating and is thriving in um, becomes completely irrelevant. It becomes redundant. So that's why surrendering is the first step. Then receiving the initiation from the Guru, for example, Om Nityananda Paramashivoham, and then constantly contemplate on that as you live and you engage in the various activities so that it becomes your cognition, so that each cell of your body resonates with I am Paramashiva. And when you realize you are Paramashiva, there is no fear, the fear is gone. Then we automatically enter into the space of oneness with everything around us. And that is how power manifestation happens and everything starts to happen. So it's really important. The surrendering is very important. It is an attachment, but it's an attachment which will lead to non-attachment. So Amji gives the example. It's like you have a bunch of sticks that you need to burn. You take one stick to put all the other sticks in the fire. And at the end, you will throw the stick that you have also in the fire. So Guru is that. It's the stick that you allow, that you use to throw all the other illusions into the fire of seeking and then at the end also the fire the that the last stick is also thrown in the fire and then that is the pure liberation liberation does not mean that um because here you were say gurus appear and disappear as you evolve in many forms 
actually here I, I would say that one thing that the Swamiji uh, is very clear and made me realize is that there's no such thing as evolution actually. In reality, there's no evolution. If you feel it, everything is self-generated, we don't understand it and we, it makes no sense initially, but when you start to contemplate on it, you start to realize that it's true and it becomes your experience that every time you're angry, it is not because of anything outside other than your decision to be angry. Every time you're excited, it is not because of anything outside other than you deciding to be excited and so on and so forth. So we generate everything in our life. We are the source of everything. That is what the Paramashivoham means. So, um, and then, so evolve in many forms. Actually, there's no evolution. It's just consciousness playing. But the thing is that when you forget your constant, you fall for the delusion that you yourself created and then you get lost in your own delusion. And that is why we are suffering. And that is why we need Guru. Guru is constantly established in the constant and he helps us to realize, oh my God, I created this delusion in the first place and then I, I got swallowed in my own delusion because I forgot who I was. I forgot that I am Paramashiva. So that's why Guru is important. Guru is the stick you need to invest in in order to realize that you are Paramashiva. And then um, all other, no matter how grand, are they are just mere illusions that we create for ourselves. Yes, everything is an illusion we create for ourselves. But the thing is that you need to you need to actually you need to actually consciously realize that you're creating that. As long as you don't realize, then you will feel bound by anything. And and uh, and and the desire, the yearning, the prayerfulness, the seeking towards freeing yourself from everything needs to happen and when it happens automatically life Paramashiva will send Guru towards you because that is the purpose of Guru it's like you seeking a job if you really seek a job job will come to you same way if you sincerely seek Guru will come to you Guru is like the gift of Paramashiva for you to be successful in your seeking so I just that's 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 what I realized there's so much misunderstanding and this fear is so big and the mind uses this idea of attachment to justify all its nonsense. But we need to realize that the foundation of it is fear. And first you have to tackle the fear. Only then you will get it. If we don't tackle the fear, all this spiritual knowledge, and it is even said in the scriptures, like I said, I will mention uh, some, um, some verses in another video where I'll talk about, uh, about that. So keep, keep watching that and subscribe if you did not subscribe and like and share this with friends if you feel it's useful sharing is caring um, so so yeah a knowledge which is grabbed by a mind which has not experienced at least a glimpse of surrendering will make that knowledge avidya means incomplete knowledge it's a knowledge you will use to declare supremacy and superiority over everything else. But that is not the purpose. You being greater than everything else is, is, I mean, what I realize is that it's meaningless. Okay, if I'm the greatest thing, then what's the point? Why would I want to be the greatest thing? It's not about being the greatest thing. It's about being one with everything. It's about realizing that we exist within everything and that we can, you know, in, uh, we can dissolve and, you know, and and enter into that bliss, that eternal bliss, which the oneness is, which Paramashiva is, which is the fruit of all spiritual practice. But it has to start with Guru surrendering because the, the fundamental problem is fear. Any understanding we grab from our mind, for instance, here we have the example of attachment. Um, the mind is using the understanding of attachment to justify whatever it wants. So we need to see this whole game of the mind and at some point, you know, you have to decide this is the source of my problems. And if I start to tackle that, if I start to attend to that and bring disillusion to that, then everything will become different. The reality, the experience about myself, experience about others, about life, everything will change. And that is why Guru is the most auspicious thing that can happen. It is, it is the gift of seeking. When you start seeking, when you pray, you enter into that prayerful mood to experience something greater than what you know, then life sends Guru towards you so that you can 
you can get it so that your seeking will be successful it will be sustained and uh, brought to success because a guru is nothing but somebody who has reached uh, that space and is operating from the constant of the universe and if your guru is not true guru then very quickly you will see guru will disappear from your life two two things if your guru is not true guru guru will disappear if your seeking is not sincere guru will disappear so then you only know you have to look in and see uh, the depth of your sincerity in what you're doing but guru is the most auspicious thing when it's once it happens um it should not be dropped because uh experiencing something greater than what you know about you and about life is the best thing that can happen because you already know what happens when you know you and life your knowledge about you and life is responsible for your depression it's responsible for your sadness it's responsible for everything for your happiness also it's responsible for your desperation from your excitement for your inspiration for your success your failure your understanding of you and life is responsible for all these things so if you want to stop experiencing some things, for instance, if you no longer want to be sad, if you, all, if you no longer want to be energetic and everything, you will have to start to look beyond you. Because as long as you stick with you, you know what happens when you stick with you. The experience you have about you is what is going to happen if you keep hanging around you. So the you, the real you is not the you you know as you now. And for us to experience the real you, you need guru so that he can give you a glimpse of you because he knows you more than you know you because he knows himself because he has the complete experience. So that is why Sanatana Hindu Dharma, Hinduism is all about guru-disciple relationship. And that's gonna be another video because I have some very good content to share with you guys about that. But um, yes, what is true Hinduism and all these things so that you can kind of have the capacity to discern what to listen to, what, to listen, what not to listen to, or what to see with a grain of salt or not. But that's going to be for another video. In this video, I wanted to address this. So I think this question is great. Um, many of us have it. Um, and then more and more seeking and clarity about it is definitely going to bring more enlightenment into our lives. Um, so yeah, a uh, fundamental thing is tackling the fear of the mind and then understanding what true attachment is once the fear is tackled and, and uh, chunked out at least. Uh, it might not be fully gone initially, but at least a good chunk of it has to be removed so that your experience of you shifts. And, um, and yeah, so if you have any questions, comment below. I might take your question and answer it in a video like this, um, especially questions which are uh, things that most of us have, right? Because this is a big thing. You will, a lot of time you will hear s spiritual seekers or, um, or spiritual teachers, they, you know, we will talk about this, attachment and all that and you will have this kind of debate but um but we need to see like uh, we need to go we need to uh, clarity has to be brought like we need that that has to end this idea of attachment without the experience of surrender has no end you can say you're attached to anything and then if you want to be free means what you want to detach yourself from everything so you will stop eating you will stop speaking you will stop living you will stop the heart beating stop breathing it's death and you're attached to death, it, it, you understand? It's like a mind that loops onto itself and that's what the mind does because the mind does not want you, actually I'll have to explain that in another video, that's the kind of clarity I got at some point. Uh, the mind is nothing but you, but uh, it's not something separate than you, it is a self-generated thing which we cherish for various reasons, vested interests, individual vested interests. But, um, but the mind loops onto itself and that is the purpose of mind. And it just wants to loop onto itself because it does not want to face the reality. It does not want to experience or face the fear that we have about um, the fundamental things about life. So that's enough for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, like if you like and uh, dislike if you dislike. But do something. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in the next video. Nidhyanda. I welcome you all with my love and respect. Let you all open all your three eyes. Om Nityananda.